Hi everybody, um, just to reintroduce myself, my name is Yasin Laswed, I'm from the Coastal and Marine Research Center uh, of University College Cork. Um, I'll be talking about more technical stuff here, but it's not going to be that technical stuff. So, uh, it's just an overview or uh, things to consider uh, when you're trying to uh, design or make decisions about the uh, architectural design of, of the atlas. Um, there are several aspects that you need to take into consideration, um, uh, which I think the main of which uh, being uh, metadata, data, and um, the, the, the mapping engine or the software itself. And for each of those, uh, you need to make uh, choices, design choices uh, on whether you go centralized or distributed. Um, you have to make decisions on the standards that you want to use. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. Uh, and uh, you need to make decisions on what software packages or bidding blocks you're going to, to use. Um, so I'm going to go through all of those, the, the three aspects that I mentioned earlier. And I'm going to start with metadata and look into uh, the uh, uh, management uh, choices, uh, standards, and architectural design. So just to make myself clear, uh, by when I talk about metadata repository, I do not mean a folder that contains metadata files or a set of HTML pages containing metadata or you know, an ad hoc database where you store your metadata. A metadata repository should be a standard uh, OGC catalog service that stores metadata and deliver, delivers them uh, through a standard web service and uh, in a standard format. And by standard, for, by standard format, I mean ISO 19139. Uh, I mean, well, I understand that some people, I, I don't know, in the States they use FGDC, but uh, yeah, no, go ISO 19139. <laughs> um, and then you have, uh, in terms of implementations, you have different software out there. Um, so, like uh, the, the typical, the most common commercial software, I suppose, is Esri GeoPortal Server. But then you have GeoNetwork, which is widely known and used. You have uh, XCAD Server, which I've never tried, Degree. PyCSW, which seems to be very successful, uh, but not probably, if you're not a technical person, uh, that's definitely not for you. Um, <coughs> now, this, uh, one of the tricky things uh, to make a decision about or to design, uh, in, if, if you have atlases of this extent uh, and with, with so many partners, is whether to go centralized or distributed. Um, in a centralized approach, basically, you have one catalog, and then um, you have uh, partners have access to that catalog, and they can add their metadata into it and edit their metadata. Uh, the, on the upside, that's easy to access and manage, and it's just one instance that you set up there, and everybody accesses it. Uh, but then uh, the problem is that uh, partners, they have usually they lack control over that catalog. They only have editing. Uh, you don't want to let partners administer the catalog. That, that, that's not, I mean, if somebody messes up something, it's going to you know, break the whole thing. So usually they just have editing uh, rights. <coughs> and then some partners will have their own metadata already somewhere. So um, so they need to load all those metadata into the central catalog, which isn't that difficult, but there's a risk there of duplication and omission and so on. So it's not, it can be tricky. Um, the distributed approach, uh, will, in, in this approach you have basically uh, every partner will have their own catalog. And then you provide access to those catalogs, obviously, in a distributed way uh, through the atlas. Uh, the great thing about it is that 
uh, the catalogs are autonomous and uh, the partners have uh, full control of their catalogs. Uh, the downside is that uh, connectivity becomes an issue there if one node is, um, is down, you won't get any results from it. Uh, and performance may become an issue also as you're requesting all data from all those catalogs and you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the most realistic approach, I suppose, would be a mixed approach where uh, we have a central catalog uh, and uh, for those partners who don't have the technical skills or the means to deploy their own catalogs, they can just use that as the, the catalog for, for, for their data. Uh, those partners who prefer to have their own catalogs, they, they can still do that. And uh, periodically, the central catalog will harvest those uh, partner catalogs and uh, uh, <coughs> make them available to the Atlas. Um, and this way, you have kind of customized control over the catalogs, and uh, you, uh, you get rid of the connectivity problems uh, and you have kind of balanced management. Uh, so those same, those same principles apply to data and maps. So when you're designing also the, the data management systems and the, the, the map mapping uh, uh, software, you'll, you'll have to consider the, the, uh, this aspect of uh, distributed versus centralized. So I'm, I'm not going through it again. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, when it comes to data, um, things are kind of looser in terms of data management. Uh, the easiest way, obviously, is uh, to have your data and data files, shape files, um, geotips, whatever. Um, that's, as I said, very easy, but well, there's a lack of integration. Uh, uh, if you want to, uh, if you if you need tools to aggregate or analyze those data, then you have to develop them um, on your own. Uh, access control also is ad hoc, and you have to develop your own access control, uh, ad hoc data management, and so on. So, uh, on the other side, database management systems, which are a bit more painful uh, to to work with and require uh, technical skills, uh, they uh, provide for data integration uh, easily. Um, they support data analysis and, uh, and aggregation. Uh, they have inherent uh, access control and proper management mechanisms. So that, that's something to take into consideration uh, in advance. Uh, in terms of standards, uh, these are not data standards. They are uh, data service standards. Uh, so that the type may be misleading. Uh, the main standards there that you may want to uh, consider or implement are uh, web user service, which is for delivering vector data, and uh, web coverage service, which is uh, for delivering uh, coverage data or grids. Again, there are different implementations there. Um, so as you would, uh, the commercial one, and then all the, 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 the three others are uh, the um, uh, so the, the, the open source ones. Um, my, I would go for Dual Server uh, personally. Uh, it, it's just great. It has a, it's transactional. It has a, a great user interface. Uh, so yeah, but that's my personal opinion. Uh, in terms of maps, uh, the most common. This is the minimum. Like maps are the, obviously the minimum requirements for developing an atlas. And uh, what people are most familiar with is the WMS, which is Web Map Service. So basically, that's a, a service that would deliver maps over the web. But uh, more recently, there has been uh, uh, like new. Uh, there have been new standards uh, um, for tiling maps, um, and the OGC standard for map tiles is WMTS, which stands for Web Map Tile Service. So the idea here is a bit like in Google Maps, instead of delivering maps just in, you know, in big chunks, 
you uh, you split the map like into smaller tiles and you index them and uh, cache them whenever you as you access them uh, so that your application becomes more um, uh, more dynamic and much much better in terms of performance and it's more than in terms of uh, animations um, so um, in general WMS is great for data that are dynamic that are frequently updated uh, because maps are cached so you just access them on the fly you render them on the fly uh, from the client perspective uh, navigation is isn't that nice and the, the user uh, experience isn't, isn't great for them. Um, and for WMTS, uh, that's more suitable for static data or data that don't change over time. And uh, from the, 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 the user experience is, is just very nice uh, and comfortable. Um, there are several mapping uh, clients out there. Um, so you have the, the first five uh, tools uh, are more like uh, APIs. Um, and the last two, they, I would think of them as frameworks. Uh, so uh, the, the, the last one being a Smart Atlas, which I'm going to uh, talk briefly about now. So uh, Smart Atlas basically is the... Uh, Atlas software that, uh, that the Marine Irish Digital Atlas was based on. Um, it was developed by the Coastal and Marine Research Center, uh, initially for the African Marine Atlas, uh, uh, and it was funded by uh, IOD. Um, so how things started uh, back in, I don't know, I don't know, five, five years ago, maybe four years ago, uh, CMRC licensed uh, the, the, what we call the MIDA engine to the uh, Odin Africa partners. So it was just a free license. Uh, we provided the partners with the required training to uh, deploy the Atlas and to populate it. Um, and it was successfully you know, uh, deployed and, uh, and, and set up. Uh, so then we thought, then the, the, as the technology was getting out of date, we thought, okay, if we're doing it, we should do it uh, right. So uh, we got another funding. Uh, we, we got a, like a fund, funding from IOD to develop uh, a, a more uh, kind of uh, um, uh, sorry, an, an improved version of that uh, using the latest technologies. Uh, so th this is what it looks like. Um, so it looks like many um, atlases that, uh, that you see out there. Um, and in terms of architecture, it's, uh, it's all based on map script, um, uh, map, map service map, map script, PHP map, map script. Uh, in terms of client side, uh, it relies on open layers and XJS um, for basically the, the, the graphical interface. Uh, how we developed this, um, that was the interesting uh, part that I think could be a good example for CMA is uh, this iterative approach where basically we would develop a, a version, uh, show it to the, to the users, basically the, 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 uh, the partners, the, or the, Africa, the, sorry, the African Marine Atlas partners, uh, they would test it, uh, give us feedback, uh, and that that goes back into the development cycle, and then we we, we kept going uh, until the partners were satisfied. Uh, so, um, in terms of features, uh, Smart Atlas is AJAX based. Uh, it has a full screen map as opposed to the previous MIDA MIDA engine, which had a tiny map. Um, it supports. Uh, hierarchical categorization of layers. Um, it supports distributed metadata search through uh, con uh, by, by connecting uh, multiple uh, catalog services to it. 
Um, it has a customizable GUI. Um, uh, it comes with uh, admin and, and user manuals, uh, and it is available for download for free. Um, and it is being supported by IOC projects, uh, and it is constantly being ma maintained. Um, so, just to uh, finish the presentation, I, in addition to those architectural design. Uh, Options. Uh, I thought it, it might be worth going, uh, giving you some best practices. Uh, those are just the things I could think of, but there are, there's just so many things that we can uh, we can talk about. Uh, well, obviously, the first thing is to use whatever latest uh, stable technologies uh, <coughs> you know, are, are available. Um, in general, uh, commercial solutions are very good, they, they are stable, they are robust, but uh, they, they may be costly. Uh, but don't, don't, don't despair if you cannot afford to buy those because uh, the, there are open source tools out there and which are really good. Um, and uh, you, can, you can definitely rely on them. The great thing about them is that they, they're not those huge solutions or um, systems. Usually they would be specialized. You have one, one tool, for example, for metadata, which is your network, or you have something for, for mapping. Uh, uh, so they would be lightweight, and if you merge them together, you can end up with something really nice. Uh, but that, that, that requires a bit of programming skills. Um, uh, comply with standards, that's not an option. Uh, and uh, uh, go HTML5, uh, that's, I think, not an option, so uh, uh, no silver light or flash, or, uh, I, I would avoid going there. Uh, and another important thing is to engage users as early as possible in the development life cycle uh, and use this iterative uh, uh, life cycle, basically. Um, from our experience, what uh, worked well was to have one technical partner uh, focusing on developing the Atlas software, because developing an Atlas requires programming skills, and you cannot expect everybody to have those pro programming skills. So the best thing would, is to basically centralize the development and make just one, one partner responsible for that. And everybody else should just focus on populating the, uh, the atlas. Uh, hence the idea of an atlas in a box that ICANN is trying to promote, uh, which is basically uh, the idea of a software or an atlas that, that you can reuse, you can um, customize and deploy very easily. Um, I recommend that at early stages of the atlas, uh, development. Uh, you look into standardizing several things. Uh, uh, for uh, the most important uh, being uh, legends. Uh, that's uh, work that we've done uh, as part of the African Marine Atlas, and uh, Greg here has done a tremendous job in that. So please uh, feel free to talk to him <laughs> if you need any. Uh, uh, or if you want to build on, on, on the work that has already uh, done. Uh, uh, you, you should consider standardizing the layer names, uh, the data fields if possible, um, metadata profiles, because um, otherwise people will end up with different ways of writing metadata. Um, metadata keywords, ideally they should be standardized. Um, uh, or things like organization names. There are several metadata fields that, that, that could be standardized using existing vocabularies or which you may want to, to extend if needed. Uh, I would even go uh, uh, into standardizing the look and feel of the different atlases and uh, make them look as sexy as possible. Um, that, that's one key factor in, uh, to determine like the success of, of, of the atlas. Uh, multilingual uh, atlases, uh, since there are at least uh, three languages, I think, uh, in this uh, 
project. Um, that's something uh, easy to do uh, from at the software uh, uh, on the software side. A bit more difficult uh, on the content side, uh, but you can you can make an effort there. Uh, then the the the, the real, real problem is the maintenance of the atlas, both in terms of the software and the content. Uh, in terms of the content, what we do uh, at the Coastal and Marine Research Center with, uh, with MIDA is basically we hire students to, uh, to do that. Um, so that's, I suppose, the cheapest way of, uh, of doing it. And uh, students are just great. They, uh, they do the job and uh, they don't question your decisions. So. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, that's all I, I want to say. So. Okay, Yassin, thank you very much. <laughs>